Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this, yeah, yeah. my friend, come on, is the R&B Money Podcast. Yes, it is. This is the authority yeah. on all things yeah. R&B. Where the fuck is your accent? <laughs> Head on, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful, my friend, what you ask for, because, you know, it's a flow in my spirit. <clears throat> oh, my God. Show is going to have a certain flow today. Yeah. Uh, come on, mate. You know. Mate, come on, bruv. The way we try to organize this thing is it flows, is it, is it, is it reaches your spirit and and, and your insides. It, 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 it kind of models poetry, yeah. Huh. <sighs> yes, it does. It flows so well, it flows so well. It just, the poetry flows so well, and you put it together, and it's like a flowing tree kind of thing, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It just got expensive, yes. Yeah. Uh, it just the the level of gift has has gone to the stratospheres and the outer spheres and galaxies that we've never seen. Um, uh, I'm just excited to be here, to 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 talk to this young lady who's just one of the most talented human beings I've ever seen in my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, her name. I say her name correctly her name. because it deserves reverence. Marsha Ambrosius. Amazing. Amazing. One more time for me. Ambrosius. Am- Is that how you said it? Ambrosius. Okay, so some people do say Ambrosius, right? Okay. Then it's Ambrosius. I don't even know how to pronounce my own name anymore. <laughs> I've heard it back to me so many times. Wrong. How did you I've just hear it when you it. were born? <laughs> when I was born, darling, I came out of the womb and they said, there she is, Marsha Ambrosius. 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 Yeah, it was Ambrosius. Ambrosius. Yeah. So but it, when I got the, to America, it was like, what's up, my Marsha Ambrosius or Ambrose or Ambrose or Ambro. Ambrosius. So it's almost Am- like a Z. Yeah, yeah. it's weird. Ambrosius. I kind of like Marsha Ambrose. <laughs> I was referred to as not even Marsha Ambrose. Oh, there go Marsha Amber Ambrose. Amber Rose. Amber Rose. That's a yeah, and I just left it. You know what? Being in Philadelphia that Ambrosius. long, it was, it was what it was. But I love it. Ambrosius. Ambrosius. I love yeah. Ambrosius. I Thank love Ambrosius. you, darling, with your wonderfully awful British accent. Well, there are a lot of things I don't do <laughs> well, of, so I like to good. put all of them on display. So. <laughs> and there <laughs> That's it is. That's why we're here. Thank it's you, a bit first of, of all. I know. What's up, guys? I feel like That's this is crazy. a mild is... family reunion. Yeah. yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> um, like, you're like, you're like one of the rare artists, one of the rare entities where you've, that you've been able to maintain a mystique about you Mm -hmm. but every time your name is brought up it's like a real thing Mm. still to this day that's lovely to hear i mean you're you've you've your your imprint Mm. and i think it's 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 because you're wonderfully talented it's because you're an awesome human being but you're very distinct in how you approach all of it like it's very much yours. I've been in intent intention my intentions have always been to do just that. I think I've been such a unique individual in this very when I say urban space, in our R and B field. Unfortunately, on one side it's been deemed as one thing, mm-hmm. one toned. It's this box. It's box. And mm-hmm. then you try and do that one thing that makes you outstanding and you're seeing how long that can sustain. And you're like, okay, how long can I get away with being myself before I'm then forced into having to fine tune this thing that people are grasping towards? Because what R&B has been the driving force of of course our space mm, yes. for however long. And it's wild that I remember doing my first solo project with late nights and early mornings and I had so many gems in the cut and I'm like oh I can't wait to put this record out and there's this one thing 
I hope she cheats on you with a basketball basketball player, player. which playing basketball my entire life, it just Mm. felt like a funny little joke, a little freestyle. I did on, what was it, Ustream we used to have at the time, freestyled it on Ustream. And that's the thing that takes off. Not far away, not sour times, not lose myself, not any other record. The ratchet one, the outlandish statement. And I was like, hmm. I see R&B and hip hop doing this fusion thing where the shift is about to happen and people are going to go ratchet and there's nothing that we can do other than hold on to the reins and still try and find yourself within it. But coming from a space of I've been able to say what the fuck I want for so long, Mm -hmm. it's I should be able to say what the fuck I want. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know? 100%. But you have to stand on that in R&B. Mm-hmm. And some people have a way of doing it where anyone can sing your song and there's no uniqueness to it. It's just a, a good song and anyone can sing it. Mm-hmm. Name an artist, give it to them. But then there's me and there are very few people that are just going to say, okay, I'm going to sing a Marsha song because it's such a signature. It's so unique. Even if, it, even if it's, oh, I'm trying to touch on this little thing that i think r&b is for a joke i hope she cheats i hope she cheats is the most ratchet thing i think i did with my space in all of its uniqueness is, is it Still. is it, yeah i mean is, for me, is, just it, thinking about is it, it right ratchet now. or is it Slightly. just like or is it just the truth like it's a, it's a feeling it's just it's a, a real it's a, it's a feeling. And but it's, i'm saying ratchet coming from me where people are like oh my god marsha like say yes, Marsha. I, like yeah, you know, yeah. so it's it's I, the difference. And in maybe that. we 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 may look at it because we know you. Hmm. Exactly, we may look at it differently. Hmm. You know, like it didn't surprise me. Of course, hearing the record, you know I'm me. like, fix it. She who? Right. She, you <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. She, she feel a way about these LeBrons. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a little better, just a little better. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing better now. And that was the song, and you know, but it was still very much. R and B, absolutely. 100%. At its core, it's the truth, think, and that's what R and B is. It's yes. just the truth. Yeah. We can interpret it how that's what we it should want be. to. It R and B should be the truth. R and B should be the truth, and that's the uniqueness that stands yeah. the test of time. And I feel like I can stand on saying that I've done so for twenty plus years now, yeah. and that's as crazy to say that you've sustained that. You can say that. I can say that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But in also praising what this platform is as well, you and I have brushed shoulders that entire time. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's insane. Mm-hmm. To go into this being, well, not front row. I've only got like third row tickets to your concerts. So I couldn't even, it was sold out by the time I was getting there. So I got freebie, got in anyway. So there I am. Oh, tank. Oh, I deserve it. Oh, like, top of your lungs. And I'm a fan. And then coming into it, we're sharing stages yes, together. Absolutely. So not saying your age or nothing. You've been doing this. Way no, I say my age all the time. No, I know. But it's like yeah. to do that in our field and really claim to not only have made R&B money, mm. still making mm-hmm. R&B money, mm. still have R&B money. There's a big difference in that. Because yeah. in our field, a lot of money is well, I, just, I just paid private school tuition, so I don't really got too much R&B money left this week. No, crazy. but <laughs> the fact that you can say that you had it crazy. to give that up, I know what that is. I have a door, I know it, what it is. It, it hurts. All this jury is on like... borrowed time. I promise you that. It hurts. On borrowed time. If I got to pawn this shit... <laughs> You can. So these babies can eat. Hey, you see what I showed and up in today? A black hoodie. It will go I'll back. Re- and you ready to pull a case. I hate it. No, we're not claiming that. We're actually going to stand on business and say that we okay. make okay. Okay. and right. still have yes, yes, yes. and laugh about the luxuries of kids yeah, in private absolutely. school absolutely. because of what we've done yeah. for two plus decades now. That's insane and incredible. You say it like With that, more yeah. to come. Yeah. Like, With more to come. I haven't written my best song yet. Talk written about it. Loads of them. Yeah. I can write so much more. Like, and will. There's yeah. too much life to be had. It's too many memories to make. And just to see the reaction from people in the audience listening to these songs that we've made over that course of time and it resonating in a way, it's powerful. Yeah. 
And I respect that power, which is why I've only released so much. Mm -hmm. Like I've actually contained because it's a responsibility. You're responsible for someone's happiness, heartache, love, life, hate, just through the songs that we make. Mm -hmm. It is a responsibility. And I do take it seriously. It's terrible, but. It should be, though. You ain't playing. I'm not. My music isn't for play play. Like, don't play it if you don't mean it. Like, Mm. you want a one night stand and you want to play a Marsha record. It might turn into forever. Listen, I can think. You know what? No. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) You can shit. Um, (laughs) I'm a wife. What are we we doing? Um, How do. Let's go back to the beginning. Mm hmm. When does when does someone say in in the beginning? Give me give me the birthplace of of your unique self. Having a crush on the guy that worked in McDonald's in Camberwell, London, England, hmm. South London. <clears throat> he was a friend of a kid that lived down the street. His name was Mark. I don't even know his friend's name. I just knew that he had the old school brown McDonald's uniform. Remember like the shitty brown with the hats and the the clean press shirts. Like that McDonald's. The shitty brown? Like I have... So he worked at McDowell's. Yeah, McDowell's. (laughs) Not the Big Mac, but the Big Mac. Ah, Big Mac. So my school was within... Five minutes walking distance. McDonald's was like seven minutes the opposite direction. I didn't need to be over there, but would go over there and just stand outside the window. That's what a crush did. Salivating over, well, the cheeseburger, but him as well. And this song I wrote in my head at the time was called Gonna Get Ya. (laughs) So I was out to get him. (laughs) Were you high behind a tree too? (laughs) (laughs) Like, it was called Gonna Get Ya. Like, I was walking down the road when I saw your face. It was so terrible. You looked at me, yeah. You went away. It was like really corny, really cheesy, but the core of it and the essence of it. I'm not mad at none of you. You know what I'm saying? My little 12, 13 year old melody, years go by, now I'm in my teens, 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 where feelings are true feelings and that turned into butterflies. So it was, I just want to touch and kiss and I wish that I could be with you tonight. You give me butterflies. So I wrote butterflies about him. At what age? I was like 16. What? I had to be 16, 17, because I was definitely going to that bus stop to get the 35, 35 bus to Brixton to play for the Brixton Top Cats. I was still playing ball at that time. And I would go to that McDonald's every single time, get the bus. How long did he work at that McDonald's? It was like three, four years. Oh, yeah, he put in time. Yeah, was he the he manager? Put in work. I don't know. Well, I just remember the uniform <laughs> going from dusty brown to, you know, the white shirt. So maybe it was flipping burgers at first and then sweeping the floor. Now like, fries. now I'm on fries. fries. <laughs> and that's when the big <laughs> man started rolling in. So, exactly. A year or two, I <laughs> make assistant two. manager. <laughs> exactly. So Butterflies butterflies happens from that. So my unique perspective on seeing this very monotonous scenario come from innocent feelings like, oh, one day I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you to, no, I have feelings. You give me butterflies. Like, all you got to do is just walk away and pass me by. You don't even acknowledge my smile when I tried to say hello to you. Hmm. Yeah. So I felt that, but really, melodically, and in composing certain songs like that, stemmed from my my obsession with Jodeci. Mm, there's always that. Like, yeah, like Jodeci have been my reason. Okay, so Prince Michael Stevie, no particular order, mm-hmm. favorite artists of all time. And they're like the umbrellas of then everyone else. Mm -hmm. Because I can say all the other names. They just go in those brackets. Stevie, every performer, writer, musician, Prince, complete rock star, abstract in his own way. Michael was just a fucking star. Yeah. Yeah. Star of stars. Legend. Star of stars. Hits of hits. And I love them all dearly. 
I didn't want to make music until I heard the production of Devante. Hmm. Make music, like sit there, was figure it, was out. Was anybody in your family making music though? Or no? My dad. Your dad. Your dad was yeah, making music. Yeah, my dad too. was a musician and basketball coach. Okay. Hence yes. me. Yes. You. <laughs> so yeah, it, it was him playing bass or lead guitar, singing in a 70s funk band called Supercharged that were actually signed to Virgin. Yeah, yeah Supercharged. You know what I'm saying? I like Supercharged. it. Yeah. I like it. I don't be liking all he the nice niggas be saying it. Born. One of them, no, like he, yeah, Supercharged, I'm rolling Supercharged with. Supercharged is doing it. So. Yeah. I had that background and there's me watching my dad play all these instruments and don't touch that. And he, you know, Mr. Miyagi me into, okay, I'm going to touch it. I'm going to play this bass real quick. I'm going to play these keys real quick. I'm going to play, you know. So the love for music came from just it being around me. But listening to that Jodeci era, the New Jack Swing era, I was like, what are they doing? doing what is this thing let me figure out these chords let me listen to these harmonies what do you do again and then i'm the fifth member of jodeci vocally i can find the other harmony in anything like it's I, insane i feel like maybe i was the fifth member you, you think you can be six we can fight we can fight <laughs> like, you said that way too confidently yeah, too. No. i don't like i'll it. fight anyone. <laughs> i don't know <laughs> if you've met jay vante <laughs> you gave yourself a name okay Nice to meet you, Jay Mr. Mr. Because oh, I'm both. I'm Mr. <laughs> Mr. Dalvin and, and Mr. Jay Fonte. So yeah, Mr. So Jay Fonte. Yeah. yeah I, I feel you. I don't know. There's an episode with, with, you know, an episode. where we had Casey okay. on here. Yeah. And, and he verified this? Yeah. 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 We, we sang. We had on our leather. I we had on leather. It. I don't know if we actually verified, but other than thank you for being so wow. gracious and nice wow. and kind. But I will say... Without, I don't know. You might be fifty six member, but done. I don't know if you're the fifth. Fifth or six? <laughs> That's a fifty six. Fifty six. Remember fifty six. Damn. There's a lot of us out here. There are. There's there a lot are, of us out but here. There's, there's no me. There's, no there's none. Me. You, you, it's you your, seriously It's your had... episode, so I'm gonna give you this. I'm gonna. <laughs> you got it. You I'm gonna let, you listen to. Me. All right, listen to any one of my songs a cappella, and really hear my harmony arrangements. And just know where that comes from. That, so you can claim wherever your spot is. Yeah. I just know for you me. You put it in the music. It's all in there. Yeah. yeah. All of that influence is in there. And my reasons why to create the way I create mm-hmm. stemmed from really picking apart what that was. And yeah. it was from the the interludes. Like the nerve of the interludes yeah. were just outrageous in 90s R&B. And um, to want to carry that further... And keep the integrity of what my R&B is for me, is what I've pursued this entire time. And the longevity in that is why you can sustain that. Because people want to feel exactly that. They want to fight for their sixth or seventh position that they so claim. (laughs) Wreck your set. Look at her. Look at her. Don't make me call Casey. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, I got him on speed dial. I'll call, his, I'll call the family. I'll call his wife. I'll call, I'll call him. Really? Yeah. Really? Well, I'll call his mama. How about that? Ooh. She loved Tank. No, no. Not That's she loved she Tank. She loved Tank. I gotta step. I gotta step aside on that one. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna have to bow down to that one. That's 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 fine. No, no, the but worst, look at that. No, I'm gonna tell you the worst thing. Though. Who are we fighting over? Twenty, thirty years from now. The worst thing is, don't go to an NBA game with Tank. Why? Every NBA nigga's mama are the biggest Tank fans you've ever met in your life. It's so the craziest thing in the world. It's the craziest nothing. thing in the world. I'm Unc. I'm like, wait, wait, who mama is that? Oh, you know, that's that's not just my man. You know, she, I had to go saying happy birthday. I graduated to Unc. <laughs> I'm the mama's so man. That's now. how he trumps that, all arguments. I call him mom. I call him mom. That's not fair. Their mama, not they, fair. I get their mama's tickets. <laughs> I get their mama's tickets. It's true. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> nothing. There's nothing yeah, we can like, do about that. So yeah. when you were, so when you're going through this phase, right, where you you're becoming the songwriter and you're loving the music, you're also playing basketball. Mm-hmm. How are you juggling the two? Because what you're talking about musically is not a locker room conversation. No. That's not like, you're not taking the Jodeci tapes into 
the basketball locker room and y'all talking about the Devontae harmonies in the in the yeah there's no, a, in the piano. Kind of but the my version you know what I mean? of that yeah. was having my well the Walkman at the time, mm-hmm. which is shaky juggly cassette tape mm-hmm, advancing mm-hmm. into the CD. It was me with my headphones and all of the teammates. Oh, Mar, sing that song again. Sing, sing uh, Mary you was Jane. You with that. Yeah. Oh, you were jukebox. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I love that. That was my way of sharing it mm-hmm. and then getting the, you know, still very insecure in that arena. Didn't really want to be on any stages. Didn't want to be seen by my teammates. That you're hype. Your biggest fan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, nah, yeah. sing that again. Y'all watch, yeah. you can sing. Yeah. And I'm like... And you putting in your time. Yeah. You putting in so your time. So that was no, my very intimate first experience of putting myself out there. Yeah. So that was my version of, okay, maybe I'm on to something. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't juggling. Not according to my dad, who was very much, you're going to be about this basketball life 100% or are you are going to take music seriously? And I didn't take music seriously until... I tore ligaments. Can we get the violins or some sad music for that moment? Because it was we, we got, devastating. We got, yes. Devastating. Mm. It was tragic. Keep going. <coughs> I heard the crunch. But were you in America yet? Or I wasn't. You? I was still overseas. You were still overseas. I was playing a three-on-three pickup game at Elephant and Castle Gym. And we hadn't lost a game. And I just wanted to play one more game. We lost the last game. And I was like, nah, I'm not leaving the floor until we win again. Play music again. (laughs) Play music again. So I played that last game. And I remember receiving the ball. Mm -hmm. Mm. Remember it was like yesterday. I went to cross over, and as soon as I hit that pivot, crunch. It's like it ricocheted through the entire gym. And now I just wanna break down and cry. Mm -hmm. Mm was over then and then yeah you can stop now <laughs> so after that <laughs> it, <laughs> the whole try, world to get sad. ended no there's no need to get sad it's so great with your accent yeah we're done now Thank yeah we're so done now. <laughs> so that's what happened it was a it movie crunched. scene it was like slow motion and i hadn't seen my life without basketball yeah until that moment and how old were you 17, 17 when it happened, 17, 17 about to be 18. And it was devastating, like heartbreakingly crushing. Like you don't picture your life without the thing that you love right. until you've lost it. Yeah. So music, hobby. I can listen to music all day. My mother's vinyl collection, outrageous. Go in the crib. Basketball, I'm up first thing in the morning. It's late nights and early mornings for basketball for, basketball. for me. It was practice Monday through Friday, away game Saturday, home game Sunday, repeat. I didn't have a day off, not with basketball. And then it's gone. And I was like, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to write about it. And I got home, got a diary, got in front of my piano, and I wrote the song, if I was a bird. And that was about losing basketball, which was then a part of the first Flowetry album. So if I was a bird <laughs> stemmed from Michael Jordan's documentary at the time, Come Fly, Come with, fly me. with Me. Come fly with I used to watch that on repeat every, every day. dang day. <clears throat> and it was without basketball, my life is incomplete. Hmm. So it's like you had me caught up in this starry-eyed world of dreams and it's that one lost shot i like your jazz so all these songs are about flipping burgers and shooting baskets regular shit regular (laughs) shit 
I take the most regular shit and I make it your everyday. Like most yeah. of my prolific longevity, long game, I want this music to live in the space forever are basic sayings it's what you gotta do is say yes it's getting late why are you gonna be here hello yeah. how are you what are you up to nothing i hope she cheats on you with a basketball player it's very matter of fact yeah, yeah. far away and every minute you're gone i'm missing you so it's gonna be a late night early morning when i come home it just feels like not not that your universal calling will you know, make the floor a little extra slippery at that time or or make your shoe stick to the parquet so that your knee goes to not that not that it does that, mm -hmm. right? But your calling has a way of showing itself and showing up to where you ultimately don't have a choice. I agree with that. And that just comes with what is our gift. We can run from it if we want to. And it's going to be right there going, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the gift that I gave you, it's time for you to give it to the world because right. that's what you've been blessed with. And regardless of where your headspace is at, what you think this is about to be, this is actually what it is. So even when I wanted to quit, like very recently, not quit, I just feel like... I've completed what I wanted out of this space. It's like Super Mario Brothers. I'm level eight. I jumped over the dragon, saved the princess. I'm out. Like, it's done. I don't need to do anymore. There's nothing to prove. I wanted to sell a couple million records, work with my favorite artists. And I did all of the things that should be someone's bucket list very early on. Like how a song that I wrote about the Doo Doo Brown, Michael, I mean, McDonald's. His name might have been Michael. I don't know. <laughs> like, who knows? <laughs> We're just mm -hmm. trying, trying to figure out, where are you? I really want to know where this guy is. Um, I didn't know years later, Michael Jackson would hear a demo that was presented to him by John McClain, presented to him as a flowetry album like look i want you to hear these girls and a part of that demo package were the original flowetry album including two songs that were just demos say yes was one of them say yes was written for ron isley and me and dre harris did hmm. that he didn't take but it was specifically catered to him but he didn't take it so he ended up doing a duet with jill scott for that project and didn't take Say Yes. So Say Yes is just sitting there as this lonely demo, shipped it to ba Babyface, didn't want it. So now it's just this outstanding song as well as Butterflies. So Mike hears this Butterfly song on this flowetry demo like, what's that though? Can I have that? Mike, you can have the entire album. <laughs> That's what you want to do. Can I have that? You what else can, would you like? No, just... <laughs> What yeah. kind of <laughs> That's two coming to America quotes <laughs> thus far, like between the big bucks and this. Okay, sure. so I didn't know that that's how these things were going to transpire, but you dream big enough, big dreams happen. So when it starts to happen, I can't then say, not I quit, but there's got to be more in me if that was my start. I can't start there and then where do you go from there though? Wherever you, you just want. keep going. Yeah. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah. That was the year 2000 that that demo resurfaces, is repurposed and Andre Harris and myself go in the B room of a touch of jazz and I'm like, look, I have this record, Dre. I know that you are the guy you did Long Walk, The Way, like my favorite Jill records, I Know It's You, let's get this. We do that demo. By March of 2001, we're in the studio with Michael Jackson telling him what to do and how to do it. Like he's behind the glass like, yo, Mike, <clears throat> one more time, bit pitchy. One more time. Me with the talk back, telling that's Michael crazy. Jackson. Well, that's in yeah. I'm that's 23 crazy. at that time. And you guys, don't have your, you guys have your deal yet or no? It's we signed? signed our deal December. Okay. So the end of that year. So we were already at DreamWorks. And then the album's done. So we're literally waiting for 
papers at that point <laughs> to illegal aliens trying to get this record deal. Oh, so it was, hey, let's get you some visas so we can put you yeah. to work. There is that. Yeah. 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 So the album, our album didn't drop until October of that following year, I think. So by the time all that was squared away. But yeah, there's Michael Jackson, like Michael motherfucking yeah. Jackson. And the thing too, like you said, it all comes from your demos going through the hands of John McClain, mm -hmm. who are, all, and at this point, he's at DreamWorks. Right. If you sign anywhere else, I, well, for what? Michael Jackson never hears. Not even butterflies. a little bit. Or even we, if you know, did, we, we, we just always, we like to connect it, the, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? We like to connect the dots, and we, you know, when people are thinking of why I did this or why I didn't do this and all these other things and what didn't come from something, mm -hmm. like just signing to this, you know, boutique right. label. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. that wasn't the like, grand they weren't things. like the no, biggest of the we big. We were supposed were... to be with um, Motown and then it's John McClane and it's yeah. Michael Jackson and it's, I might want to go that route because. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to need this, this butterflies. <sighs> And that's how business-wise, that's how that all kind of transpired, which is crazy. But Michael Jackson himself telling me, you know, if this is your beginning, imagine where you're going to go. Right. So Flo Tree go on to go platinum, couple of Grammy nerds and toured for years. And then... So here's a question before you go there. Mm -hmm. Does the Michael Jackson work, just that being in that conversation and being in that room, make the 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 flow of tree that much more urgent to the building mm. um did you guys become more of a priority yeah well like you said before it was still very much boutique mm -hmm. so it's on the rock side it was what alien ant farm on mm -hmm. the urban side it was ourselves um ron isley um what was her name why am i missing that right now um, I really don't know what you came here for. Uh, okay. Is that Jonelle? Is that her name? Jonelle, I think. Okay. Lovely girl. We've actually oh, had yeah. conversations. Was Dave Hollis there yet? I want to say, no, I don't think so. Was he there yet? It was very, it was what contained. Year is this? this is 2000 when we signed, but 2001 when all of these things started to happen. So I'm not saying there was a level of urgency now that these, I think it was a talking point. So even with our papers not being done, it wasn't like we could release the album that day. And Flowetry, the Floetic album, we're talking a completely different time in industry. Like our first video was up for a VMA. Like we're up against Coldplay. <laughs> like we were, we had different budgets back then. Talk you know what I mean? It. So yeah. it was talk about it. It was different. Yeah. So I had a different spoiled experience of what industry was like, mm. and I don't think. Even, even with the Michael Jackson coming into play, when that album was released, Butterflies was still very much in here's the demo on the actual mm -hmm. album, the Butterflies mm -hmm. demo that Marsha sang, and this is why. Yeah, the fact that you guys were able to use it on the album too. That was a DreamWorks yeah. play, and yeah. they could because it was the same building, right. and it was like the the silent, not so silent, co-sign yeah. head nod. The of, Michael nod. Yeah. Jeez. These are my girls. They looked out for me. I'm looking out. And that's what that was. So, I think you should use it as well. <laughs> you think, think he said it just like that? Or, you, or, you know, the voice everybody be throwing around is just, man, you should use that shit, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> now, I'm telling you. <laughs> the Michael voice he gives, and you're a singer. I know you have a deep, husky voice, but preservation is key. Mm -hmm. I feel like he only had that voice. He was preserving, preserving yeah. every single yeah. ounce of his yeah. vocal mm -hmm. to just be the icon and performer yeah. that he the was. The Jacksons talking talk soft. was they still yeah they talk soft yeah they, when they talk to you they talk soft they don't they don't they don't project they don't do a whole bunch of I'll yelling be cracking jokes yeah. and laughing and drinking all tequila. kind of shit you have to understand I was in the Just studio me and Andre <laughs> Harris in the studio with Michael Jackson mm -hmm. it was nothing but jokes did he have beverages Andre is completely beverages? full beverages. What do you mean? Like, oh, like, bevies? Yeah. No. No? Bevies. Like, the kids. <laughs> what about weed? Any weed? About... No, Any but we did have smothered turkey chops and mac and cheese and strawberry shortcake from a soul food spot in New York called Jezebel's. We had that every day. Every day. Fried chicken. Every yeah, we day. We might have had it every day. I put Get on that macaroni pounds. over here, man. Cause... 
No, it was. It was <laughs> lovely. Like, like Paris was... and Prince when they were very, very young, just kids, chilling in the mm. studio. Like, it was very family wow. environment. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It, it was a wild time. So we, when you get this record placed... Have you done, I mean, obviously you're getting your record deal done. Have you done your publishing deal yet? Or did people find, I like, already, how did that go? <laughs> okay, so I already had a dusty, um, your <laughs> a very, dusty. Your, your first, so <laughs> your first publishing oh, yeah, deal, yeah, okay, okay. you know, one of those. So they're just so, very so much no throwing me in the studio with whoever trying yeah. to see what sticks. And then I've gone to the States on a whim to do this flowetry thing that pans out ultimately. And then it's, Hey, I've got, you know, a placement on Michael, Michael what? Jackson. <laughs> so it only upped the ante for me yeah, and yeah. lent to there, like, oh shit, we've got a writer who's got a Michael Jackson record. So did you renegotiate? Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I like oh. to hear. Snow going In to retrospect, yeah. you kind of wish you just cashed out then and held yeah, on to all yeah, of your shit. Yeah. But yes, at the time. But you didn't know that that money got you to well, you know yeah, what I mean. Got, it got, got, you to America. got you comfortable. It probably got you to America. Shit. Yeah. Big money coming yeah. to America, yeah. and I came and had the means to do it. So yeah, yeah. If you don't yeah. mind me asking, how much did they give you for your fir- before before you did butterflies? <laughs> Ten grand. Ten grand. Yeah. And did you have a crazy commitment? No, it wasn't okay. that bad All of right. a commitment. Okay. But then was it, an M- it was an MDRC though. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So make sure. If you look at it like you never had a record deal yet and you didn't know where these placements were even coming from, Mm -hmm. outrageous deal that I was then stuck into for years because of the renegotiation. Now they're trying to hold on to you and you're like, well, help me. But you got in at a time before before the thresholds were created. So (sighs) you were able to, with that one album... Yeah, do what needs With to be the done. Move, yeah. Move, yeah, yeah, yeah. move through a term. Right. A so whole even term. even up until um late nights and early mornings, which is what, 2011, 2012, that wasn't so bad. And I've had this conversation before with record deals that were signed predating this streaming era. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is how are we supposed to fulfill album commitments and terms? Under those same contracts, because yeah. Tower Records don't exist. We can't do an in-store signing. There's nothing physical for me to actually give you. Yeah. So what stipulates in my deal that I haven't turned that around already? Because the stream is not going to do it. You gotta the go, dollar amount you gotta go to, back to my contract. You ha- you everyone to has to go back, to, back the to the table. table. We're like stuck on a deal. I'd be in a five album deal for... 127 years right yeah. <laughs> now like, as yeah, it the stood mix, you know the what I mean the mixtape don't count until it reaches like what 2 billion streams like and what now it's t- an album the physicals <laughs> count for this much of it the digital only counts for this like but where does it say that to... in your contract and where's the clause <clears throat> no, that even saw that they just automatic, automatic you though they automatic you based on their negotiations with right, the they've been talking services. to the digital oh, yeah, been, services and platforms, which is insane. So <laughs> if you write a lot of your songs and produce, so that's your 100%. And you might break off a producer if they came in and say, okay, oh, I'm so, going to yeah. layer it. So mm-hmm. I'm going to take, let's go with 80-20. So out of 80% of that record that you have and you put it on iTunes or Amazon and you put it for sale, you're getting a substantial amount of your 80% mm-hmm. as it pertains to a sale. Mm-hmm. What are you getting now? As a stream? Point. point the fact oh, that you said oh, point. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, it starts there. It starts at point. The fact that it starts, it starts, it starts there. at point. point. It starts at yeah. point. So right imagine yeah. signing these yeah. contracts back in the day. You're hype. You've got a record deal. You write. You produce. You know that your fraction of that portion of the entire composition is solely yours. Yeah. Like butterflies, seven zero percent mine, seventy. I have that. So when it was out, it's seventy mine, all of it. Yeah. Now streaming it, seventy percent of butterflies by Michael Jackson is reduced to a point something. Yeah, depending on what platform, it could be point zero zero three. I didn't negotiate that. that point wasn't zero in, zero that's seven. That's not in my contract. Do you but know it, what I mean? Well, here's also the question though, because. That 70 still performs well in in the traditional spaces that mm-hmm. it performed in, right? You right. you've you you do this 
this digital 70 is brand new. It's brand new. It's, it's, Absolutely. It's icing. It's like, like now we were just talking about this. It has to be negotiated right. better. Mm-hmm. Right? But who starts these conversations? <laughs> like, well, ultimately we have to. Yeah. But you, but we have to do it in a sense, outside of the major corporations, we have to we have to start it from an independent sense of saying, "I will not give you my product." Mm-hmm. Like I don't like I don't care. Right. It's the same thing as if 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 you're Nike, and Foot Locker is saying, "Well, we want to sell your shoes for this. This is what we want to give you." Right. And you being able to say, no. "I don't want to put my shoes in Foot Locker. I'm going to put them in Champs." Right. And you have to you have to at make that de- cost. right at this, right. Right. At this right. cost right, right? Yeah. so and I think we also have to get into the the super fan space mm-hmm. of literally going direct to consumer. So think about just saying that. Imagine when iTunes was iTunes, and if I go, oh shit, Tank has a new release. This mm-hmm. what was it Tuesdays back then? When, yeah. Whatever day it yeah. was, and I'm like, I want to buy your song. It's 99 cents or 99p in the UK. Mm -hmm. I've got to spend that entire for just you. Now with a subscription, you've reduced me to a monthly fee. So I, as the consumer, have access to everything. To everything. Everything. Not to specialize in exactly what it is that I want. I just have this plethora of music to go through and scroll through and not spend or invest any time in. It's kind of... What the fuck are we doing for real? What it, it, what, it, <laughs> like, what it is though is that it becomes it becomes a form of 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 just radio in a sense, which isn't fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not a fair game. It's, like I, it's not, never been a fair game. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. right. Never, to be yeah. fair, right. Yeah, to be fair, it's game. never been fair. But we've managed to get the R and B money where we can and where mm. we have and sustained it. Not a lot of us can still get on a stage live and do that part. It's very much, okay, let me rely on what the wave is right now, get something that's trending, Mm -hmm. and that's my money, if that's the money. Like, I've never been in it for that. I've been in it for the art, and I've made money because of it. So I feel like my intentions were different. Like, recently, having gone in the studio with Dr. Dre, and Dr. Dre very unrealistically saying, do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I can play Jesus with music? <laughs> and that's exactly what we did in the studio for this project, Casablanco. Like, Casablanco. Casablanco. Even when you say it, it's just this it's mysterious yeah, little, yeah. like... I'm, I'm, it's high level. I'm it's, seeing the whole movie level. right now. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a bit that. bigger than an album. And, you know, everyone, Marsh, when's that? It's a bit bigger than just an album we're talking dr dre here so yeah, yeah what took us ultimately two weeks to get the grasp of what the album actually was to implement the strings and to implement having to clear what we decided to borrow and take from this time capsule of music during a time when we didn't know where the world was going during the pandemic mm-hmm. it's fucked up out here yeah so I'm like, if we had to take the music that we cared about and make it one thing and listen to it in one space, what would that be? So it's the audacity to take Duke Ellington and Michael Jackson and George Benson and Patrice Russian and Wu-Tang and Frank Sinatra and random things that identify us as musicians as a whole and put it in one space to then be reduced to giving it away as a soundbite or hmm. radio. No, but, it's, but if it's you bigger than but that, it, you have to you have to now be um, more. What, what would be the word for it? Just you you have you have to take a different chance with the music, and and not go into these spaces that have just always been what they are, mm-hmm. and and where people are making up terms and making up new ways to do bad business, which you can say, listen, you just have to, you have to take ownership in it completely. It, it's just my opinion, mm-hmm. especially when, if, if I'm fucking Dr. Dre and I right, know, I'm using you know, that as an example, like, like, but you know, you can release it how you, how you please. Of course. Now, but it's, but if you want to be a part of their platforms, mm-hmm. 
the only way is to give it to Get them either at their whatever whatever their pricing is or say hey let's negotiate mm-hmm. if you want this album this is the negotiation to it this is these are the numbers that we want or not or i'm going to now vinyl is getting cracking again mm-hmm. i'm going to i'm gonna press it up in vinyl no be vinyl too you know what I'm saying? But I'm that's a, that's the game we're in. But there's a way that, that is I where we at. Consumers to absolutely get from any artist that they care about. It's just where are you going to find us? But I think it's a way to do both, right? Mm-hmm. There's a way to, you know, feed the system, but also from a super fan aspect, or mm-hmm. from uh, what's the word? From the the desire of the super fan. Mm-hmm still supply the experience in a way yeah. that you want them to have by creating the space that they have to come and get it from. If you're right. a super fan, if you desire to really experience this the way it's supposed to be experienced, right. that out there is just, that's just, they have the music. I don't but even the experience remember getting your like radio your boom box and waiting for the radio station to come on and praying that they play that record and press and record sure. even with the dj mm-hmm. yelling all over that shit and you rewind it crank it up into the end when it's fading out there's no urgency with music like that anymore or listen to in a way where we had it. it's like we had a spoiled experience of the way we listen to music or the way it was presented to us Right. Like right now, it's may as well be friggin' what's them singles websites, Tinder, swipe left if you don't like it. It's just that. It's definitely next. that. No, it's next. absolutely it's definitely but, that. But, it's but auditioning. Again, but, it's auditioning. Right. but again, what I'm and saying is. And if I don't get you in 10 seconds, it's. But, what is, but you didn't what is, hear that part. What is the site <laughs> you, know? you create that that says this is how you're supposed to uh, internalize and digest this? Right. Come to, come to right. me. Right. To get it the way you're supposed to get it. Like imagine us on tour, right? Mm-hmm. And what fans would <clears> think that to be. They're going to know that there's someone's piano involved. And at some point, either one of us is going to be behind it. Absolutely. Doing our good singing. I want to see that. I want to go to that. Mm-hmm. Yes. But I also want to hear how I feel when I press play on that record. And I'm not going to get that when I sit in my car and maybe catch it on the radio for that 10 seconds or maybe catch it on Instagram or maybe catch it on one of these social media platforms. It's how we deliver at our core what is our purest form, mm-hmm. R&B and R&B money of all of it. How do you want to deliver that? Because you have your platform. Mm-hmm. But you also have a responsibility to then go, okay, how are we elevating us and what yeah. we're doing to, mm-hmm. to ensure that artists like myself... I'm always going to be on someone's stage. I'm always going to be booked. I'm always going to be in the studio. I'm always going to write. I'm going to release music when it's to the quality that I see fit. Yeah. Some people don't get the opportunity to be as to meticulous that. Mm-hmm. as that over the course of time. It's preservation and trying to figure out how we do everything that we can do to preserve that and make it ours. Well, the first thing you have, we have to make sure we, you know, realize is that everybody won't be able to do that. That's so sad. But everybody's never been able to do it. Everybody's not designed to do that. Mm -hmm. Which is why, I mean, there's only one Marsha. Right. There's only one. You, your design. But they are like minded. And they are like minded for sure. And you get into the and, predicament, and we will get. Where... And so our goal right now, all three of us right now, what mm-hmm. we're doing is, again, we're giving more information and more insight into how important that is to maintain that, to continue to do that, to mm-hmm. extend the life of your music in such a way, right? Mm-hmm. Based on the experience that you want people to have, and some people are going to see that. And digest it and 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 replicate that formula. Right. Some are. Right. Most aren't. Mm-hmm. And 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 not in a bad way, but because they can't. And it's just and it's also like you said, you, you have to decide what you want out of it. Mm-hmm. Everyone, every musician, every artist, everybody has to decide what they want out of the gift that 
God has given us right. and how you want to utilize that gift. Because mm-hmm. there's certain, and I tell people all the time too, that, you know, I was like, in this, in this new day and age, for a new artist, because how does a new artist break? And how do, I was like, there's no, you know, I can't tell you how to break. But what I can tell you is that you have an opportunity to give your music directly to the people. Right. That we never had before. We've never had that. I'm thinking just the spoiled experience of just having social media now. If I had it back then, shit, I wouldn't even be doing music. I'd have like basketball mixtapes and me crossing the <laughs> <other. laughs> like, Yeah. But you no, know, I, sure. did, I didn't you have that. Right. Then there'll be a bunch of highlights yeah, going around. Because right. be you know, you talk this basketball talk, and I'm trying to see the tape. I mean, everybody talk this basketball Someone talk. Someone has the tape. Someone has the tape. I need Let to the see the tape. Let the unicorn live. <laughs> I mean, you can go outside. You want to create. No, no, you don't want to. Do, listen, it's, it's a gym right there that I've dunked <laughs> on many people. <laughs> right, dunk, right there. Dunked on it's, weird. It's, it's right Weird. it's it's right okay, there then i i feel like all in an athlete you can attest to this oh no we no. all have it wow. we all have it we all have it i've nah, never nah, seen nah, it that, that nigga's athletic seen that nigga's athletic so I'm like, okay that, okay listen, i'll let him have it okay so as athletes so do, do you think <laughs> hey do you think do you think do the thing do the thing <laughs> Oh my god. He always wants to do that. It's awful. Six for a wingspan <laughs> for a reason. You see these handies paws? So you feel huh? like you can block anything? Anything. Just, okay. Any, oh, anything. Shit. There you it's go with another it's accent. Horrible. It's awful. Any, it's like any, Jamaican. Man. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. No. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's in us. No, you're right. That fight, that yeah. dog, yeah. it will remain and stay in us. And I feel like applying that into our music is why we're still here. For now. sure. Doing for sure. it the way we're doing it, yeah. yeah, yeah it's absolutely. like I want this shit. Yeah. However, I get it. Like to have come from Liverpool, England, move to South London, get to the states, do this thing, it takes off, and get the cosigns of not only the three people I mentioned as being my top three. Michael being the first. Michael Jackson saying, yes, you are great. Imagine where you're going to go. Prince, are you Saudi Arabian? The scales that you do with your vocal are just insane. Sing my favorite song to me again. Lay down. Go ahead. Stevie, waiting for me at the side of the stage. As I'm getting off stage singing with Gerald Levert, my favorite Rick James song, Ebony Eyes. My life has been unrealistic. I've done some unrealistic shit in our field. R&B is taking me to the places that you you can't even make up. Yeah. If it were a movie, you'd be like, nah. Right. Yeah. It's exaggeration. Right. Yeah. Until you're around the people that were there when it happened. You've been there for some of these things that have happened yeah. Yeah. that have been absolutely outrageous. Like, I wish we could say the things that we want to say on podcasts, but I feel like certain things are sacred. We lived during a time where we did our dirt without the internet. Come on, thank you, Lord. <laughs> we got into a lot of <laughs> our you. real thank shit you, Lord. <laughs> before that was even a thing. Oh, my God. Think about that. So it's I both do. a blessing and, ah, but right now it would make for a great headline. Right, right. And it's like, which one, wh- wh- how, how do you want your life to go? How do you want to be What's remembered? the choice? You what know? is the choice? It's choices. Yeah. Because I can safely look into the camera and say, I've done some shit, said some shit. I can own all that shit. Yeah. All of it. I've had a great time and I'm continuing to do so. Having a Dr. Dre during a pandemic after an entire brain aneurysm say, fuck that, I almost died. I just want to make great music. And I want to do it with you. Sheesh. Why me? Yeah. Why not? Why? The That's fuck the question. Not? Yeah. Why not? I've had one. Do an album with Dre, they said. Yeah. It will be fun, they said. Yeah. It's been a tedious couple of years, but some of the most. I feel like I've done more conditioning in my musical field within the past three years than I've done over the course of maybe 10, 15, even touring, being in the studio, what we did in the studio together and how we were doing it, I can take on anything. He's different. (laughs) 
Different is an understatement. He's different. He's Dre for a reason. Yeah. And the fact that I was chosen to do this very specific, very intricate, very intimate album, which is more than an album, with him, I have to take what that means for me. Like the part that I play in that. Because it doesn't happen without me. Like he allowed me to do some shit that... I've never and shouldn't have been allowed to do in the studio. Like, it's not fair. The album is unfair beginning to end. You'll press play, you'll hear it, and you'll say, what the entire fuck is happening right now? And I get it because I was there and I listened to it. Like, it's not me anymore. It's above me. Hmm. This, this, this shit goes with or without me. It's one of those. And I have to value that girl that stood outside the McDonald's window looking at Shitty Brown. He's gone from Doodoo Brown to Shitty Brown. Brown. (laughs) And say, if I wasn't influenced or inspired by this crush, this driving force of butterflies that has shaped my pen into the hope of love, lust, heartbreak, healing, all the things. Does any of this happen? No. Tearing ligaments, does any of it happen? Am I coaching in the WNBA or assisting in the NBA right now? Am I going that route? Like what's 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 the plan? This is the plan. Which is insane. This is the plan. That's insane. Eating smothered turkey chops with Michael Jackson. Smothered turkey chops. It was very specific. That was the order. And having him call me up like, I have to miss a day. Um, I can't come into the studio today. What am I going to tell him? Nah, come through, Mike. (laughs) We have the hook, melody, something. No, he's being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So he can't come today. Whatever you want to do, Mike. (laughs) I'll see you tomorrow. You have a good time. Peace. Mike said peace? I said peace. You said peace. Okay. Great journey. And that's just this much. Yeah. And uh, just speaking back to something that you said when you were like, what else can you do? It's just, it was more, man. There's so much. Because, because you don't you you don't realize how many people are connected to your journey Mm. are connected to your continued process that are watching and waiting to be inspired even more by you. That's that's like, it's the why for sure, because I know it's above me, but you kind of hope and pray that people who are riding with you and for you aren't relying on you to post to social media every day, telling them what you're doing every second of the day well, for the, relevancy. The people who for follow you and likes and, and that know you mm-hmm. get you. Right. True. But, but I'm Even, just saying yeah, as far yeah, as the climate that yeah. we're living in, it's it's very much if it wasn't on the internet, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Yeah. You know. So it's I, like, I don't think that's true for every artist. That's not true every for, artist. That's true but for artists who have built their thing that way. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. True. But for some people, you can just pop out and do one yeah. of these. Yeah. Hey, and everybody's like, right, hey, right, hey, right. You, you see your hand? Your hand pops out. Right. They pop and out. They pop the out. That's the unicorn you. I've been attempting to preserve because it's very much. You have to protect yourself out here at all costs. As black women in this industry, you don't emerge unscathed. It's tough, and you have to remain tougher because of it. And fortunately, I haven't had horror stories that have hindered me ever wanting to stay. I've always emerged triumphant, like, no, fuck that. I'm standing on my shit. This is what I'm doing. And the nature of the game is, as a female singer, songwriter, producer, we don't get the credit that we deserve. Not all the time. We fight for the credit that we deserve. Get it. 
and it's still not as celebrated as it would be if someone walks in the room and says, yo, you should say the instead of that. Oh, he wrote a crazy hit record. He did what? <laughs> he said the <laughs> and that? And I did, th- uh, you know what? <laughs> How about it, King? I want to I wanna be specific. I want to ask a question it's just for me. Um, musician to musician. Mm-hmm. Songwriter to songwriter. The chord, I just want to start with the chords to say yes. Mm-hmm. Like, what is that about? Like, that's... It's a reach. That, arra- <laughs> that, a, that, a, that arrangement... Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 like, it's church. It's the most... Ha- it's still very much church. But it's very haunting. Like, it's very... Okay, so initially, to my recollection, this is my story, I'm sticking to it. Myself and Andre Harris in that B room of A Touch of Jazz, it was a chord structure that did haunt me. It was an eight bar count initially. So blah, 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 blah. And I said, no, you know what I mean? So you can hear where it would go. Okay. If you pass the key, there you go. It's that, yeah, it's that, it's and then that. it would have been blah 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 blah. Back to it? No, no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't have landed on the one. It would have did a. It did an entire arrangement altogether on the fourth chord. Oh, you went. Y'all so went blah 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 blah. You know what I mean? Almost like a. Yeah, which is very pretty, and it was also um, quicker in tempo. Hmm. So I said, slow it down and use those first four. Stay, stay, and loop it. Go back, and then then we had something. I was like, put me in the booth. Press record. Uh. Uh. (laughs) See, I've been watching you for a while. Your smiling style. Want to know we're back in. Said, be with you for the night. All right. Is that all right? Baby. Then the... There's something you want for me. So that makes sense. <laughs> you have made that about some bit of tea. Now we could take that step to see. Mm. Said, if this is really going to be, now all you got to do is say yes. All you gotta do is say yes. So don't deny what you feel. Let me undress you, babe. Open up your mind and just rest. I'm about to let you know you made me so. And then I didn't have any words for that part. So, so, so. (laughs) You made me so, so. So by the time verse two comes in it, it literally took two minutes to write. I was like, okay, one more time. Hopped in for the second verse, had no bridge whatsoever. So it was like, what does this feel like? Go on, keep going, keep going. So like, (laughs) what would you do if you were Marsha Ambrose? You just go for the orgasm. I even say, Andre, I did. Andre, I did. I did. Oh, that's what you did. I did. I did. Because 
have to understand it's midnight. He might have been asleep at the freaking console. And I'm like, Andre right there. Like, <laughs> and then, yeah. So Andre right there is still in the actual take. He's in two outtakes that actually make the album. <laughs> That's great. On Hey You as well as, Dre, could you stop the tape and play it back? I said I'm about it, about it. Something like that. It was like a weird ad lib, but it stayed. It made the cut. So, yeah, it was creating orgasms through music is my thing. So imagine having Casablanco as a landscape and this very unrealistic, elevated version of life from a billionaire's perspective. What are those orgasms like now? So walking into that studio and hearing, I mean, imagine hearing Say Yes for the first time, but the melodies I heard for this for the first time, I now have to create different orgasms. So without getting too kinky, for me, well, no, this is how I operate. If I walk into a studio, I'm seducing every single instrument that's implemented into the composition. Mm -hmm. We fuck it, basically. Yeah. You have to fuck the music. You have to fuck that shit up. And you can't, there's no friction there. It's all smooth. So with every musician that Dr. Dre had in that studio, whether that was Bluetooth, Focus, Trev, Dem Joints, Sly, all of these elements had to get fucked up to make it one thing. Mm -hmm. So when you press play and it's this symphony, all of these elements are giving each other space and energy and intimacy all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So depending on where your spot is, if it's sometimes it's my neck, sometimes it's my kneecap, sometimes it's a brush of my arm and it's seductive. That's what music is supposed to do. And I've been doing that for two decades plus, starting from that one. I'd say that was the sexiest song to that particular time frame that I'd done and continued to go on and do way more, whether that was 69 and So Good with the interns and even late nights and early mornings with Rich Harrison. It was just all of these moments of sex through music. And you want to be that. You damn right. You want to be that. You do. When you do your concerts, you're like, I'm, I'm your threesome. Mm. I'm the threesome. You're in that room. That you're you're listening to tour? that. I'm, That's how you gonna promote the tour. Absolutely. I'm still in I'm so much of your lingo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm downloading. I want all every my credit. Thing and you're what'd you take? Twenty percent. <laughs> I'll take. <laughs> I ain't taking point nothing. Oh, I'll tell you that. I ain't taking it. I will call you. Yeah, give me that Spotify Nine compositions. Done. No, Jesus. Composition. Right. But that's what we do. There's a there's like a there's there's a hierarchy of 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 sensual moments. And say yes is right on that top tier mm -hmm. with untitled. Mm. Mm. That's 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 like there's a high a high level mm -hmm. of songs that are automatically intimate yeah mm -hmm. automatically yeah yeah mm -hmm. no one's talking right everyone's just trying to figure out who's gonna go first <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> that's it yeah when yeah. those top tiers so like the yeah. song comes over this don't, just don't read the room wrong. <laughs> right, like, don't, where's don't, this going yeah, exactly? Don't be the nigga uh, trying to go first and the room ain't really trying to go with you. <laughs> they played the song. I don't know what you want me to do. I don't know. It wasn't time. I was early. <laughs> there is a time and place. Yes. But it's great to have those records. Oh, yeah. my God. Like, you know the moment in the show where you're like, okay, you know where yeah, this is going. Yeah. You play that first chord and you song. know it. <laughs> <laughs> During my piano segment, I performed. You must. It. I, oh, with my shirt and off. And you know what happens? Just... You've seen that effect. See, look at me. So you understand the power in that. And as you said, I become the threesome. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> not, you know, not figuratively. 
because I have I a wife. But I want the audience to have that. Yes. That experience it's with you. It's such yes. a, a compliment. Like, having been coined a lesbian for so long. <laughs> and I don't know. It's the tomboy. Coined. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, the lesbian. There she is. It's my, like, I, I don't know. I've been completely comfortable with my sexuality for I, it's, it's the last thing I would hide about me based on the music that I make. Yeah. Like, why? Yeah. I don't mind that attention mm. or that want for you to me to be. It's intimate. That's perfectly fine. It's the music. I want to be your threesome. However that goes. Whatever your preference. It's you give your... It's the power in it. You give that sex away. You can't help who's going to be turned on. I can't. We don't know what turns on. I can't. I be trying yeah. to tell my wife, you, babe, you can't manage It's how it comes to me. Yeah. You can't. You about to get this nigga stabbed. And that, <laughs> no, don't get stabbed. And your wife knows I love her. Don't stab him. But this is the responsibility of what it is. We are superheroes. Oh, he, he, he's going. He's going. Straight, gay, whatever it is, the music is whatever it is. Yeah. We give it away and it's yeah. intimate. And you let the people interpret it. Let them dance with it. Yeah. Take it's it and dance. intimate. Like One Night Stand. This song, One Night Stand, when the concept of the song came to me, it was because of how the music sounded. And I was like, Oh, this is the morning after we fucked, for sure. Mm. <laughs> this is exactly sounds mm. like the triumphant. Who the fuck is that in the covers? I don't even know. The dick oh, was amazing. Who is that in the covers? We'll never know. Look, check the toes like boomerang. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know who, exactly who that is. And that's perfectly fine. Yep. But it was that morning after sex. Mm -hmm. It was, you're under those covers looking at the ceiling like, mm. We should fuck again one more time just to make sure it was that good. And then you do. You're like, oh shit, is this forever then? Are we in love? No, it was just one night. You Come. just say that earlier. If they listen to the music. Your one night could be forever. Your one night could be forever. And that's okay too. And that's how we that's make. That's not always okay. It's not always okay. <laughs> yeah, 18 <laughs> years from now, I shall not be responsible for any child support incurred nor... Um, the godmother of any of your children. Yeah. Are you giving us um, a win though? Like, like a win? Like you, you, you really giving us, you giving us the magical pitch, right? You're giving us all of the. When do we get to all hear of it? the intimate details mm -hmm. and, and the intricacies? Well, we can go with camera, and I can I can play you. A couple oh, things. Well, that's all yeah. we needed to hear, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, can I, can I give actual dates? Can I say a dates? I'm looking off camera right now, so we can say a March date. You will be getting something. Ah, yeah. okay. okay. End we of like March, it. something we is like coming, it. and um, it's gonna be a, a, a cool summer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Come on, man! Like, it turn is. your piano up. It's man. on, man. Come I got on, it on. Come on, man. Come on, man. You know, I just so speak of us being superheroes. In our respective fields, we a lot of the music that we've sang and we've written and produced is it's all well and good. But there's a lot of music that has inspired you yeah. to do what you do. So the people who watch the r &B Money podcast, they want to know. What they want to know, champ. They want to know. They want to know. They want to know. They want to know. Your top five. Your top five. Of all time. Top five. Your top five.
top five R&B singers? No particular order. No order. Two of those spots will be placed whether they should or shouldn't be anyone's top five, but they're the vocalists of vocalists for me. Mm -hmm. Luther Whitney. Mm. Mm -hmm. Those two spots are just yeah, yeah. taken. Yes. So now I'm down to three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Luther was so clean, man. Like I'm fair. Like it's just... starch. Yeah. Oh. You ever get extra starch on you on you, when it come back from them? <laughs> That was <laughs> that's Luther. It is. Oh, fuck. Okay, so for three, Michael Jackson takes like three versions of himself because mm -hmm. I love. ABC mic. Mm -hmm. I love off the wall mic. Mm -hmm. The dirty Diana mic did mm -hmm. something else to me. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like he's three in one. He is. Not almost. He absolutely is. He's him. Can you have Casey and JoJo as one as yes, you vocal? Can. You can do whatever you want to do. Okay, now for two voices to be so different and complement each other in such a way that made them one hasn't been matched to this day no. to me. No. Because listening to the difference of a very sensitive, almost soprano Jojo in its pure high tone to Casey's growl, it's almost like you'd be threatened to sing off the KC. Oh, but not if you're sure. JoJo. But Anyone you're else, JoJo. but you know what I'm saying? Like but not if you're JoJo. Not if you're that's, a that's great way to where put that, that power in that vocal for for me. Can't, it, is. It's just it's it's take my mind. It starts there. And then JoJo yeah. says, I don't never mind. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, it's what? Fair, and that's yeah. verse two. You know what I'm that's saying? That's verse two. You followed yeah. that yes. with that growl. That's why that fourth spot. That's theirs. Mm. It, th it belongs to them. Mm, all good. Mm, mm. Now this fifth R and B. Oh shit! It's tough. I know. I know. Oh, Just say it. Why? Just, it's okay. Now you have to. Uh -huh. Got to be somebody. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Okay, now this is someone that I listen to and like feel and does something to me. And it's only because it's been recently like Donny Hathaway and it, mm. it took me a couple of different people that would have been in my top five, but someday we'll all be free. That song, I don't think I could not cry if I hear it. Mm. And it's the power in a vocal being able to do that to me. Yep. And five is unfair because it it means I don't get to mention who currently holds spots, mm. whether that's Jasmine Sullivan. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, and what she can do with her Come on, vocal. Keep going, six, seven, like, eight, nine. there's. Oh, come on. Come on. Mm. 75. Tina Marie, what top she did with her vocal. Top nine. Top nine. Like top this. Nine, but this is all. 12. <laughs> Stevie Wonder. It's not fair. It's not fair. The stories that he can tell with his tone mm -hmm. before even lyrics come into it and mm -hmm. claims he can't see. We know that you can see. It's fine. You, you going there? Okay. All right. Because I'm not getting in that. You a tank. I'm not getting in that. We agree. <clears throat> I didn't say I didn't agree. I'm just saying, <laughs> I said I ain't getting in that. I'm just not getting in that. Yeah. I see us in the park. Do you? Man.
I don't want no smoke, Stevie. I, I don't want no smoke. I love Stevie. Stevie, Stevie. From what I hear, Stevie can fight. I'm not going to do this with you, Marsh. Say quick. Say quick. Cap. I'm not going to do this with you. Cap. <laughs> It's not fair. <laughs> How dead! There's a ribbon in the sky for our love. Is there? Oh. Is there a ribbon in the sky? Is it up there for our love? I've actually never seen one in the sky. So he did. He has. He has. That was a lot. That was a lot. Yeah, yeah. I threw yeah. that one left handed too. <laughs> He's paid it. That was Dwayne Wade. Okay, here we go. Yeah, your, get out okay. of your top five R and B songs. Five. <laughs> okay, <laughs> because we didn't. You say that because we didn't need to get. <laughs> your, your, your top right, twenty-seven. You just okay. Oh. <laughs> I want to spend the night by Bill Withers. Mm, we're gonna be aware of this. Ooh. I want to spend. I want Anthony Hamilton to cover it, mm, mm, and I feel up. like you get a Grammy. Come on, man! Just saying. Where you at, Anthony? You heard Come it. On. Um, that's one of my favorite songs. Um, the breakup song by me. Mm, okay, come on. Might as well. We're going to get our... Because, sp- like... We're going to get our publishing for all you niggas out there making y'all playlists. The Brain Pop song was like... Oh, listen to that shit. Yeah. That came from a really So honest... is that your favorite song of yours? No. Yeah. Oh. I have way more than that, but we're talking about... You said yeah. top five, five of what the, yeah. if I was yeah. going with songs, yeah. like who wrote that shit melodically and yeah, did that? You did that. It's you. in there. Talk to yourself. That's who? Um, you. That's who? It's in there. I can't help it. Thank you, Stevie, for giving that to Mike. Looking out for the bro. Definitely looked out for the bro. Mm. Mm. What a joint, too. Um, <sighs> see, with this five, the bad album. Mm-hmm. Can we have that as like one entire the song? The bad album. Because ho- most people, no, listen, listen. People off don't the wall give is great. Respect. I, bad, I love this. Yeah, I love bad what you're doing. is the most I, bad every day. I, I love what you're doing. Album ever created. Thriller, okay, fine. You're doing what you're doing still to this day. To follow that shit up and have the nerve to say, I'm bad. I'm bad. <laughs> oh, he came in with, I'm bad. Um, then has all, a Liberian um, girl. Liberian girl. <laughs> then gonna make a change. <laughs> Just it's on the same life. album. I just can't stop loving you. Like what? Don't, don't. The way you're making me feel. What? Me feel. Yeah. You never make me stay. So take your weight off of me. Ah! Come on, like, ah! like, yeah. Yeah. what? Take it off me. Take it off me. Yeah. You be God, you can see it. What? Ooh. I'm starting with the, like. Yeah. People You've been hit by. Man. You've been struck. People do not. They don't. This is the same album. No I skips. Mention it. They don't mention it. There's no skips on there. I love that you mention it. There's no skips on there. That's one whole thing. Remember the time. It's, ah, shit. How are you cooking? Okay. Forever, my lady, Jodeci. Come on. Because Come they on. were four Come on with it. very young Black men with Dr. Martens on and like see through the zipper Jones. Way the... before Prada. Way before Prada was making that. So see you're having rain, my baby. Suits. And it Me means so, so much to me. That the second line There's is nothing the more most precious. important line. You know what I'm saying? It's and the it... narrative that we were giving 90s black men to love and support mm-hmm. the family bond. Mm-hmm. But coming from a place of you, some regular motherfuckers, like hmm. you look like me, you street like me, and it was still love. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That was all love. Like, yeah, it was all love. It was all love. People get it confused with what they were. Oh, it that's, was that's all my very abstract R and B. I have there's too much music. My library is. Insane. Okay, well like now it's... you got to build some shit. Come on, come on, come on. She got to, she got to build some shit now. 
I'm still forever my lady kind of took me back. <clears throat> okay. We're going to build a Voltron. You're a super R&B artist. We want to know who you're going to get the vocal from, who you're going to get the performance style from, who you're going to get the styling from, the drip of the artist, the passion of the artist, and who's going to write for this artist. Let's start with number one. Who you getting a vocal from to build your super R&B artist? One vocal. Mm. Anybody dead or alive? Anybody. Anybody. Damn. Yeah, yeah. It gets. That's tough. It gets tough right here. Mm-hmm. Prince is ringing in my head, but is that the passion and the musicianship aspect of it? Am I getting Stevie or Babyface to write this shit? But who am I getting to sing it? Are they right now or are they back then? Can I get Heartbreak Hotel Mike? You sure can. Yeah, yeah. You let me have Heartbreak Hotel Mike. Heartbreak Hotel vocal. Mike vocal? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, performance style on stage, moving and grooving. Mm, it's a combination of Marvin Gaye and Teddy Pendergrass, though. So yeah. it's giving me the juxtaposition of it all because the song choices are the key. Go ahead. Mm, I like that. That was exciting. Uh, <laughs> the styling. Mm. It's still very much giving me a, a Teddy P in his hay. I can see white shirt, just clean buttons undone bit of chest out a little taco meat huh yeah yeah it's slack. very tuck but yeah slack, a slack. You know, clean slack yeah it an was, upgraded yeah. slack shirt clean like, maybe a high-waisted slack. slack too just okay you're with me fuck it okay yeah there okay the passion of the artist the heart of the artist prince he meant it. Every <laughs> motherfucking word. For sure. Yeah. Who's writing for this artist? Now this goes back to how the vocals sound and who I would get to write this. I need now a super team of five. Could be you and I. Who else is pen am I fucking with? Hmm. I know Dre, Andre Harris. Mm hmm. Because musically, he's going to give me and understand what that mic vocal thing is doing with the pen. Needs to lean. Modern day meets that sexy shit. So I actually trust early mixtape Drake for songs. Great I knew songwriter. then he was going to be a great <clears throat> songwriter. So a combination of our R&B finesse with the almost trap element of a Drake makes this super heartbreak hotel mic. Jesus Christ. An iconic, sexy, symbolic Prince energy, big ballad, sell out the stadium while throwing out roses to these hoes. Yeah, roses to these hoes. I say the whole thing. <sighs> No, you, you're all hoes. I'd be a hoe for that. <laughs> Shit, I'm the hoe. When we say hoe, we mean me. I'm there for that. So me, you, and Drake. Mm -hmm. Andre Harris. Andre Harris, the session has been called to order. Yeah. We need our super mic. Let's make this fucking happen. I think, yeah. Oh, now I want, I, want, I want the album. That would be... Uh... 
I want. I can hear the songs now. <laughs> like. <laughs> said the he 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 on the end was for Mike. Oh, <laughs> that's really that's really nasty. I like that. Thank you for that. <laughs> Love I that. respect your pen. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's just respected. It's with all utmost respect. I like that. With the cut, boy. I mean, boy. Don't talk to me after this. Oh, fuck. <laughs> or talk nice if you're going to talk. So I'll be talking in my accent after this oh, for the rest oh, of the day. Oh, you've got the rest of your quote. couple hours to go. Yeah, nigga done seen so too many episodes of Top Boy. <laughs> Gangs of London. That's a good one. Well, I've lived in America for like 20 plus years, so if I'm around you guys, I'm Philadelphia. Long enough. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? <laughs> see, kind of. Let me see. Okay. One more second. Can we get it, Jay? We need it. We get it. We, we get need it. it. I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no names. Yeah. I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no name. Where you was? Where you was? What you did? Don't face me. I ain't said no name. It's perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Very special segment of the show. It's called I Ain't Saying No Names. Mm-hmm. Will you give us a story, funny or fucked up? Mm-hmm. Or funny and fucked up. Only rule to the game. You can't say no names. I mean, it could be overseas, middle sea, under the sea, wherever you want to be. All you got to do is tell the story without saying no names. Okay. Um, there was this one time. Oh, shit. Yeah. On tour. And um, there was a day off in Amsterdam. So said artist decided to partake in what you do when you're in Amsterdam, which was get high, like really high, like spark up in the hotel the concierge lit you up high and it's you just checked in it's noon and um, <laughs> it's noon <laughs> yeah yeah that artist proceeded to smoke go to a cafe across the street there was a menu full of um delicious treats like marshmallow s'mores and cookie dough and stuff like that and it infused with oh with more more with more of it yeah 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 oh yeah, so, yeah amsterdam mm -hmm. okay amsterdam so of course they picked the marshmallow small one took that to the face and they were even more high so on this day off before you know it sun up sun goes down what happens in amsterdam red light district so that artist and the band decide to go down there and see what all the fuss is about so in doing so you look through a couple of those glass windows it's some sexy shit and you find yourself in there and you're high so this artist goes in there gets up to whatever, comes back outside, finds a sex shop, goes in the sex shop and buys a sex toy. So this artist then decides that it would be a good idea to go back to the hotel and try this thing out. It was from Amsterdam. Might be a different feeling, I don't know. So... Lobby call 
for the departure of the tour bus to take that artist to the next city was coming up. So they decided to take all of their stuff out the room, take the sex toy, get on the bus before anyone else gets on this actual bus and partake there <laughs> so they wouldn't pass out in the room and, you know, miss Lobby Call. Okay. Made sense to that artist at the time. Okay, okay. So get all the stuff, get the code to the bus, put the bags, you know, where they're supposed to be, get in the bunk. Now, if you've been on tour, you know when the generator is not on, it's pitch black on them buses. Pitch. You can't see shit but work out one bunk, two bunk, feel your way down to the bottom. You're in the middle bottom bunk. Knows that artist. Not the one on the right, the one on the left. I told them to get in that bunk. So the artist got in the bunk that belonged to them, or so they thought. Batteries were included. And they proceed to go to town with this toy for however long it took to not only forget what actually happened, but wake up the following morning as the bus is in motion. So whatever happened in between going has just done a don't recall what the fuck. The artist then woke up while the bus is moving. So the bus is moving. That means everybody's on the bus. Yeah. Where the fuck is the fucking sex toy, is this artist thinking? They go to, what did they say? They went to lean up to go. It's still in between said thighs where it previously allowed the artist to pass out. And it's still on. It switches on. The artist is now having what feels like a multiple orgasm while banging their head on the top <laughs> of the other bunk, trying to pretend that nothing's happening, that they've lost something. Oh, I can't find it. You can hear commotion. What the fuck is going on? Finally find the switch. It's off. They look out the bunk. Everyone's kind of, you know, rustling curtains to like see what the fuck has happened. And the sex toy packaging is just everywhere. <laughs> like, you know, that plastic that you can't it's rip hard. apart. It's tough. You know, when plastic, you get your, yes. your kids it's something for Christmas plastic. and you're like, why the fuck did I get this shit? I don't even know how you can't. There's no scissors for it. You're breaking oh, shit. shit. <laughs> and. I think that artist was talked about for the rest of the tour. And um, that's the story. I'm sticking to it. No names. Wow. wow. They really wanted it. Whoever it was. Had could it. not wait. It, it, <laughs> just it couldn't could wait. to have it. it. A bunch of to, it. It was amazing. Or so they told me. <laughs> <laughs> Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Days off in Amsterdam. It's a song, Drake. I'm telling you now. Oh, <laughs> it's a song, Drake. Days off in Amsterdam. <laughs> I just want to. It's a great way to wrap it up. The gift of my name in the hat when you start writing this. Oh, I've been there. Heartbreak oh, Mike. Where you at? Mm. I went to the I went to I went to the red light district in '98. I've never been to Amsterdam. Mm. I've never been. Never. It was that, well, I've been twice, but that one time that that artist took me on tour with them, that was 2003. It was still a good time. Yeah. It was three. It was, yeah. Because. Mm. I couldn't do it now. I can't get high anymore. I can't get drunk anymore. Like, I'm like, I don't, I don't brag about it enough, but I'm definitely nine years sober. Oh, and I say like that really? like, yeah, oh my god, but not that I was ever an alcoholic or drunk, but, still, but yeah. 
in our field, open bar is open bar. And for yeah. crying out loud, that Grammy years. week did me in. It was Nelly's fault. Oh, you like you got back to it? Oh, I couldn't do it. I can't drink anymore. It's done. So, I can't yeah. drink like I used to. Oh, I don't even try the to. The thought of even sipping yeah. anything makes me nauseous. Once so I, I get like to the second anything. drink, I'd be like... I don't know how I, I used to do it. I, I used to drink. Oh, yeah. Like so studio European drinking. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I used now? To, y'all get mm-hmm. faded over there. I used to get over it. Well, I didn't. Is the drinking I was age playing lower basketball. too? Yeah, it is. I, th- I th- want to say it is. Well, for me, I was playing basketball until I was 19, 20. I didn't drink until I was 23, oh, okay. 24. Mm. Until I got out here. Like basketball was life and drinking and smoking was Philadelphia in 2000. Yeah. <laughs> Strain Vidal's fault. They put me on. You rat you. I am. I absolutely <laughs> am. It was them. They started me off and then I got to California and I thought I was going to die in Burbank at a session over there. I thought a tuna melt was going to be the last thing I ate because I was so high, like fucked up high. Like, <laughs> so Dre was like, Marsh, I need you to write. This is when we didn't have phones that we were, you know, typing your notes in. Write the lyrics down to this song, please, Marsh. Gave me a pen and paper. I didn't even know what pen and paper was. <laughs> like he gave it to me, and I was just like, "What the fuck is this shit?" And yeah, that's when I knew I was too high. Yeah, like too high. I we celebrate. We celebrate being sober. <laughs> we celebrate being sober. You got to know what the pen and paper. When, it, when it's not pen and paper no more, is it? Yeah, you no. too high. Good job. I, you know. Done. Hey man, sometimes you gotta get it in your body. Um. <clears throat> First of all, thank you so much for coming. You, are so you know welcome. what I mean? You are, you, you know, we, we consider you family. And, Likewise. Um, but your time, your energy, your artistry, yeah, um, all of these things mean something to us. Thank and you. And so we value yeah, thank you. your thank presence. You. Um, and we value March. Yeah, that's what mm. you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We one on night it. stands only. That's what that's what, yeah. what you said. Unless you're they so. turn into forevers, and then it, you're welcome. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> sometimes, listen. Sometimes you got to experience what the experience is going to be like in order to know if you want to continue experiencing a thing. Exactly. Um. So thank you. Thank we you. We appreciate you. This is here for you anytime. Appreciate any 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 time. Mm-hmm. Um. And and thank you. Can't say that enough. Thank you, guys. <laughs> my family. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this is the Army Money Podcast, the authority on all things R&B. Yeah. And she is her, Marsha Ambrosius. Mm. Yeah. See? Wonderful. Sorry, Jay. Ambrosius. Sorry, Jay. Come on now, I'm from the womb, Ambrosius. <laughs> Oh, and be mad.